All right, so um, I'm Osama from TU Dresden, and this is joint work with uh, Thomas Fusati, Hannes Shofenish, and Simon Frost. And what we basically wanted to analyze here was what are different ways of um, what are we, different ways of doing attestation at different layers of the stack? What are the kind of security comparisons between those? And I believe that all of the solutions that exist there out in the space of confidential computing are completely broken. And that's what I am going to show also in this talk and to find better solutions and what are the limitation technical challenges around there. So that's a kind of a comparison between all the space that exists. So specifically, I want to give a little bit of a background so that everyone is on speed for what is TLS, what is attestation, because in my feeling, so some people are experts in attestation, but not the others and the other way around. So that let's, let's quickly recap what TLS is. Specifically, I will talk about the TLS handshake protocol, which means that basically uh, starting, um, and I take a specific variant of TLS, which is with client authentication. This is optional, and the server requests that it wants a certificate from the client, which is via this certificate request message. And if it requests, then the certi certificate and the certificate request messages, which you see, you see the point? Oh, yes. So certificate and certificate verify messages will be sent over by the client over to the server in order to be verified, which then creates a secure channel between that. Secure channel in this sense has so Can a, I just ask, that sure. is DH verification, not DHE verification. It's, it's not ephemeral. It's not, it doesn't have perfect forward secrecy. So the new standard for TLS is we set up the secure channel first, then yeah. we authenticate the ephemeral, the DHE version. So this is doing actually DHE client hello, server hello is actually exchanging these messages and this is secure channel, so you have forward secrecy, right? Okay, so, client so hello. The, the secure channel is actually set up here and then you do this verification. That's all I was... The secure channel is actually set up at this point and then you do the certificate verification to make it DHE. So that's not correct because at that point in time, so going by the NIST definition of secure channel, it is when the client is also authenticated and the point that you were pointing to that is just for online audience which was here, it's actually not a secure channel, it's a one-way authenticated channel. So if you don't have these two messages verified, you don't have a secure channel, you have a one-way authenticated channel according to the NIST definition. Okay, so, thanks. Please speak on the mic, please. Okay, so, so she's just agreeing with me, just for online audience. <laughs> so this is all coming from our research of two years, so of course, like, please, but please feel free to just be on the same page, so if you have different understandings, uh, feel free to interrupt me anytime. So this is supposed to be a discussion forum rather than just presenting. We had one floor down yesterday, the CC summit, which was all pre-planned, so I don't want to have that kind of thing, so I'm here just for discussion, which I like, of course. So the secure channel, going by the NIST definition, requires the cert client to provide its certificate, which is requested in this specific optional message, which is the certificate request message. So, okay. And the problem here is that TLS provides, so this is not the problem, of course, it's good for network security, but the problem is that it's not good for endpoint security. I know that I am communicating with somebody out there in the wild, but I do not know what is the status of the key which it is using I'm blindly trusting that that key is really in possession of that specific entity which is claiming to be person XYZ or some service XYZ. So the idea is that I need more for confidential computing, which is, is it really the workload that I'm trying to communicate with or not? I need even more than that. I need lower guarantees. Is it really the platform that I trust and a platform I define as the hardware, bootloader, firmware, all included, of course there are disagreements in all that, what we define as the platform itself. But the idea is that we need a different guarantees for all of the stack, not just that I am communicating with a piece of, let's say, software which has possession of that key. So TLS provides proof of possession via that uh, certificate message, but it does not provide that what software was running on that stack. Was that piece of software actually protected by some confidential computing guarantees? And this problem is not the real problem, so the problem is solved many, many years ago. So we have remote attestation. Many of you who are old enough know TPM, and there were already uh, presentations on TPM. Yes, please. Question, yeah. sir. Yes, please. 
You said you don't know that you're talking to that exact um, endpoint, but if you've got mm -hmm. a key distribution service which will only hand out a key to an endpoint once it's verified all of this, then surely yeah. by talking to something with that key, you do know those properties. No, I would disagree because if, if for instance, I have that certificate, right, and I leak out my key to you, for instance, it's not you, it's not me who is talking to that person X. Okay. Right, so I could leak out until I have the guarantee that that key which I am possessing, the certificate which is issued by the certificate authority, if it was really protected by me or not, whether that key was running on some confidential computing workload or whether it was running on some genuine, let's say, just a normal server. So it could be leaked out. So, so the, and the... No, no so, so the, the problem please. really is that the, um, you have con uh, potentially conflicting information. The TLS has very specific information, or the, the TLS key has very specific information and very clearly defined information about the entity. That is not necess necessarily the information the entity itself has or needs to provide. For example, a VM can be, uh, can be identified by, with, a, with a system UUID. And actually, that's what I would be using when trying to check, is that really the VM I'm thinking to talk to? But that's a UUID. That will never, ever show up in the TLS key uh, or in the TLS certificate. So the TLS certificate says, right, I'm this name. But is this name correlated to that UUID? Might or might not. Who's going to tell me? Yeah. Somebody had a question here, or is it? OK. So, so as I said, so remote attestation already exists. So the problem statement that I posed here was uh, just a starting discussion which is that we know remote attestation, VTPM, where there were already like two presentations and also for the workloads, we have now the same concept applied to the confidential computing domain. The key idea of remote attestation is three things uh, from a protocol perspective specifically. I generate an evidence. Secondly, I transmit over to the second party. And thirdly, I need to appraise it, which is a fancy word just coming from RATS for verification. So I verify that evidence. So evidence, just a name for, let's say, SGX code, or AMD report or uh, ARM CCA uh, token, I think is what they call it. So the idea here is that um, I'm using the RATS terminology here. So if you are not familiar, so the idea is that this is, the, this is the attester, which is actually the entity under test, confidential computing workload, or the confidential VM, or confidential, uh, let's say, the enclave, or whatever it is. So this is the attester. And the other party is the, it defines three roles, but I combine the two just to be just to be very simple, and this is the verifying relying party combining the verifier as well as the relying party who is actually interested in knowing what is the status. So this is if you are the workload owner, for instance, you are here the verifying relying party, assuming you have the verifier inside your own. So the way it happens is the protocol, from a protocol perspective, it should send out a nonce, and that there are now, so again, some terminology, a testing environment and target environment. So this target environment is the one which is actually being checked. So this is the confidential computing workload or the enclave, for instance. And the testing environment is the one which will actually collect some claims. We need some root of trust which will actually collect the claims and then send it over to the relying party that, hey, this is the thing that, this is, this is the current status of that enclave. So there is a generation of this uh, evidence which is actually including three main things. The first one is it samples the claims at some point in time, stores it in some shared uh, registers, for instance, and then the target and uh, so sorry the testing environment will then collect out these claims at some point in time which could be later on when the request for attestation comes so it could be not necessarily at the same point in time so if it's runtime measurement it could be same but it could be the boot time measurements as well and then typically you also need to protect these measurements because they will travel over the network back to the this point back to the verifying relying party so typical way of doing it is by assigning it could also be mac for instance and um, for instance, if it is local attestation, it could be MAC, which is faster. So the real problem statement is, how do we combine the two things, remote attestation and TLS together, so that we can have not only the guarantees about the network security, which are done by formal verification of the TLS protocol many, many years ago, like 2018, when it was standardized, TLS 1.3, but also about the workload and the platform which is on which this is running. So that's the real challenge, and the idea here is that we have explored all the design options which are there for attested TLS, and we, 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 we kind of categorize them into three main categories, which is 
pre-handshake. So, so we have two things now to combine, which is attestation and TLS. I can do either the attestation first, and the most important part here is the signing of the claims. And that's where it's defining if I do before starting the TLS handshake, so time going to the right, if I do before the TLS handshake protocol has actually started, this will be pre-handshake attestation. If it is between, uh, within that, so it's kind of amalgamated between that TLS handshake, so it's intra, and finally, if it is after the end of the TLS protocol, for instance, using the exporters, it is post. So with these three design options, just to quickly give you an idea of how do they compare with each other, the idea is that pre-handshake attestation, as I said before, the protocol has actually, TLS handshake protocol has actually started, the generation of the evidence already happens. So it can be way before that. And that's the problem actually in the pre, where it can lead to the relay, uh, sorry, relay as well as replay attacks, which is, which is kind of the problem that I generate at some point in time, I can replay it across any sessions. There is no link between the generation of the evidence and the TLS handshake protocol, which will run afterwards and can be way later afterwards. And just a crazy thing that Microsoft and Intel are doing, they generate certificates valid up to 2050. So a large, large window to do a replay attack. Anyway, so this transmission of certificate happens within the TLS protocol. And then finally, there is the appraisal of the evidence which happens at the end of the other party. Second variant, intra, what happens here is that we have the nonce coming within this encrypted extensions. And with that nonce, it is generated, the evidence is generated within the TLS and is valid for that specific uh, handshake. It cannot be replayed across any other sessions because it has that specific nonce and these parameters of, that it negotiated in the first phase. And appraisal happens uh, within the protocol again. Third variant, post handshake, how it happens is that it establishes a secure channel, just like before, without any attestation at all. And then it uses the exporters to generate that evidence after the secure channel has been established. And then there is a delay or a latency of half a, a round trip time that it has to now transmit the evidence over that secure channel. And finally, the appraisal happens, which is afterwards of the TLS handshake. So in this picture, I'm showing everything that I have presented until now. So with the design options within these three, so pre intra post, and within that, it can either be self-signed. So within the pre handshake option, we have either the self-signed, so it can itself sign that certificate, which is what Intel's RATLS does. And the two options that I just mentioned about, which is this open enclave by Microsoft, and uh, Intel SGX SDK, they generate certificates valid up to 2050, uh, big problem. So TA issued certificate, which is the second option. Here we go to the trusted authority, say, hey, check our evidence, provide us a token, and that we can use over for the next session. And that is basically what Verizon is doing, uh, or Verizon. Um, so the CA issued certificate is the third option. Within, uh, let's say, before using that session, so the server and the client I showed, I go to the certificate authority, I say that instead of issuing a normal certificate within that certificate signing request that I sent to the CA, I say that, hey, this includes also my, cert my, my evidence. And that CA now has to be modified to, uh, to check also my evidence that verifies and then issues me a token which I use and afterwards. Again, a replay uh, is possible here. So if someone, someone gets hold of that token which was sent back by the uh, by the attested signing request as part of the certificate, that can pretend to be me. So, so that's, again, a problem. So intra, we have two options. We can either do some negotiation, what kind of format. So we have a number of options. Intel SGX has its own format, SGX code, TDX code. Um, AMD has its own format. ARM CCA has its own format. So how do we, how do we negotiate about which format we are going to do for, for generic things? So that's, that's something which can be done via negotiation within the TLS phase server hello and client hello, within that the negotiation happens that, okay, so I want CMW. Can you support CMW? That says, yes, I can support CMW, yes, okay, so we go with CMW, or SGX, or whatever, so, so that happens as part of the negotiation itself. Final option that um, is the post handshake, it's used in SCONE, but the bad thing that they do is actually, they use the exporters, but they, they, there are three, ex so section 7.5 of TLS 1.3 talks about RFC 8446, talks about this exporter thing that's the, the, uh, already provided by TLS, so that's the functionality that they are using. 
But the problem is there are three inputs to that, context, label, and key length, and they use all of them as constants. That is, they have a specific constant that they use for label, they have, a spe they have empty context, and then they have a specific key length, so every time I will call these exporters, that will give me exactly the same thing. And this is what they are using as exporters. So which is, again, a problem that I can replay this for uh, any number of times. So I will, um, so this is what I wanted to discuss. If you have any other design options, if you see something missing here from any solutions, um, up till this point, I claim to be fully exhaustive of what we know of. So below this line that these, all of these are examples. Of course, we know that there is AMD is not in here. RISC-5 uh, RISC is there, but many other solutions exist. But we hope that the first layer category, which is uh, all design options, are hopefully covered. Unless I miss something, I would love to hear about it, please. I'm not missing. It's, I mean, we had similar questions um, when designing the NVMe TLS thing, which we did. And um, what we chose upon to not try to meddle with the TLS protocol itself, I mean not meddle with the handshake, insert magic values here, because that would require you to modify the libraries themselves doing TLS. Sure. Yeah. Which means that would be in that security critical path, yeah. which means your code really would need to be audited, everything, blah, 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 blah. Where sure. we said, it's, we found it a tad too risky. We'd prefer to keep the libraries intact as they were, because then we are sure we haven't tampered with the integrity and security analysis of existing libraries, so we could exactly. just use them as is. That's why we essentially did not try to look into modifying that thing. Sure. Similar for the post attestation, the problem with the post attestation is at that point the TLS connection is already live. Mm -hmm. It's live, but you don't know whether you should be talking to it or whether you should, you should be sending IO over it. That turns out to be really, really tricky. How do you avoid sending, having someone sending IO or sending any data over a channel which is already established? So you end up in some sort of established but not established phase. And so you have a connection, but which is not actually a connection and something. Ugh. That was also really, really hard to, uh, to model in, the, uh, in code because while well, well, it's quite easy, right? You have a socket, but open a socket, talk to it. Now you have a socket, open a socket, and well, talk, but not really talk. And would you mind holding off? No, it doesn't, you can't really model it in, securely in the existing flow. So that's why we came to the first solution, right? Do the attestation before establishing the TLS channel. Okay, so I will firstly quickly just answer the first one first. So there is standardization going on in the TLS working group, which is a draft, which is with my co-authors, Hannes Finish and so on, uh, our co-authors in that draft. And TLS Working Group has a very high security standard for setting out these standards. And that's basically, they require formal verification. So we will do actually the formal verification work. We will standardize in the IETF. We have the uh, proof of concept already implemented within that intra. And that's what we will, um, uh, we will have this line of uh, chain of the work. So that's not really, we will throw out something in the wild that, okay, use the TLS with broken guarantees. We will actually formally verify that was one of the things I didn't talk about, but anyway, so we will have the formal guarantees. To quickly wrap up the, okay, yes, please. Yeah, so the break started. Um, I think everyone is probably in need for coffee. So this was an, this were interesting discussions and we can probably continue that yeah, during sure. the break. So um, thanks for the presentation. Thank you. Very much. Thank you.